Tuesday. Bonnie here with So Inspired by Bonnie with another Tuesday's tip. Sorry to be a smidge late today. I was having trouble finding the live button on my uh, phone. For some reason it disappeared on me there for a second. Um, so let me get my computer set up. Let it get it refreshed so that we're all here. And I see myself there, getting it arranged. And I just, don't you just hate computer problems? I know I do. Okay, I think we're here now, so um, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'll get this out of the way. I would love for you to join our newsletter list. Just go to www.soinspiredbybonnie.com, that's S-E-W, and uh, we'll give you information about new releases of our embroidery designs, um, the glitter flex that we carry, and sometimes we have free patterns and free designs uh, the current issue does have uh, our December issue does have a free pattern for the best dressed oven dro uh, door and we would love for you to join us again it's so inspired by Bonnie.com so back to our Tuesday's tip um, if you're like me you do not have a huge sewing studio I have I'm fortunate enough where I do have a spare bedroom, but I do not have a humongous uh, sewing studio. So I have to look for ways to condense things down so that I can get the most I can out of the space that I have. And I know a lot of you are in the same boat as I am because when I talk to my friends, we all seem to say the same thing. There's never enough room for all our sewing supplies. So this tip is about ribbon. And as you know, ribbons come on these spools. And to me, the spools themselves are a big space waster, um, if that's a word. <laughs> but, you know, the inside of them is just dead space. There's nothing there. It's just taking up room. And I needed storage for my ribbon because I do seem to collect quite a bit of it. But I needed a space for my ribbons that, number one, I could condense them down. Number two, I had to be able to take the ribbon that I wanted to use to my cutting board to cut to size there. I'm the type of sewist that I'm not real big on having all my spools of thread, or not spools of thread, excuse me, all my ribbon on a dowel rod of some nature where they're all hung up on a rod because invariably I need the color that's right in the middle and I had to take everything else off to get to it because I'm the type of sewist that doesn't like to cut my ribbon from the wall and measure kind of in air. I like to roll it out onto a flat surface and cut at my cutting table. So I had to be able to grab the color that I wanted. And the third criteria that I had is that I had to be able to see all the colors pretty much at a glance. I don't like to waste time digging for stuff. And the system that I had, I tossed all my ribbons into one of those plastic drawers. You know, a lot of us have those plastic storage containers around our room, which are great. I, I love mine, but um, when I stored all the ribbon in there and I had three drawers worth of ribbon, I was digging through the colors and I had them stacked on top this way while I couldn't see the colors underneath. So I needed a method that would work better for me. And I hope what I've come up with will work better for you, too. I hope you'll give it a try. Um, I ran across this idea on Pinterest. Uh, I love Pinterest for ideas and inspiration. The lady used uh, very small cards and had a much smaller drawer, which is fine. Uh, she was using a different type of ribbon, not just for general sewing like I do. I needed a little bit deeper drawer so that's what I got I emptied out the drawer uh, that I was going to use to store my ribbon and I'll give you a little sneak peek of what we're 
hoping to get to, but here's how my ribbon is stored now. They're all on individual cards, and I've organized my ribbon by color, and then I have all my rickrack type of ribbon here, and then over here is the elastic, roughly um, decorative kind of ribbon, but it's also elastic. So I have that stored here. And I have, whoops, I almost dropped it, a little extra space here for shopping to go get some more ribbon. So I was tickled about that. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get started and see how we go about doing uh, this so that it's organized and you can get to it. First off, what you're going to do is, um, and again, I went from three drawers down to one. And so now I have two spare drawers that I can, well, I have long since, filled up with other notions and things because I've been using this method for a few years now and it's been working great for me. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your trusty measuring tape and you're going to measure the width of the drawer on the inside. This drawer happens to be about 12 and 3 fourths inches wide. And what I did was I thought, okay, I don't have any ribbon that's over three inches in width. So I divided it by four and came up with three inch width for my little card because I didn't get too technical about, yes, it's 12 and seven eighths. I wanted a little bit of wiggle room and fudge room so that I could easily slide the little cards in and out of their rows. So having them a little bit narrower than the exact width of the drawer worked great for me. The next thing you're going to measure that you need is the height of your drawer. My drawer, and you're, again, you're going to measure the inside. So I'm kind of, I'm looking on the outside, but it's a clear drawer, so I can kind of see how deep it is uh, from the base of the drawer to the top. My drawer on the inside is about five and a half inches. Again, I needed some wiggle room because by the time you start wrapping the ribbon around it, it's going to take up some space on the top and the bottom of your little card. Um, so I cut my cards three inches wide by five inches tall. That gave me some wiggle room on the top, gave me some wiggle room on the sides. The next thing you're going to need, and again, I had four four rows because I divided four into the 12. It's 12 and 7 eighths, but again, I made them a little bit smaller so I had some wiggle room. The next thing you're going to want is some dividers for the, um, the rows that you have. So you're going to measure the length of the drawer on the inside, and this one was 14 and 3 fourths on the outer edges of the drawer, and in the center of the drawer, it was only 14 inches. So, because there's a handle and that takes up some space on the inside of my drawer. So where it was 14 and 3 fourths, I cut the length 14 inches. That gave me 3 fourths of an inch wiggle room, which is which is great. And I made them the same height. My dividers are still five inches tall. The center one, where it was shorter, I made it only 13 inches long. So, you know, you can do that. You can make your dividers different lengths. Okay, so what I used for my dividers is mat board. The same thing that you, uh, framers use to go around pictures at a framing shop. Um, what mat board looks like, if you're not familiar with it, is it's like kind of a thin cardboard. Uh, this one happens to be a black velvet, which is really pretty for framing a picture. And the back side is white. This is about a medium size. This is not the full sheet how the mat board comes. They come in very large sheets. Um, if you're fortunate, this one fell down, so I'm picking it up from the ground here. Sorry about that. If you're fortunate... Hobby Lobby used to sell the centers of the mat board when they would uh, frame a picture. They would have all this waste, and rather than throw that out, they would sell these at a reduced rate. Um, so you might check your framing department at Joann's or Hobby Lobby and see if they'll do that for you. I was able to pick up 35 pieces of mat board for under 10 bucks that were 11 by 14 inch square. 
So they they come in all different colors when you buy them that way, but that wasn't a concern of mine. I It didn't bother me at all that they were different colors. Uh, I've got black and red and white and yellow, you name it, it's, it's in there. I just wanted it to be nice and sturdy uh, for my ribbon. So what I wound up with were these three by five uh, mat board cards. Now how you can cut them is, I'm not gonna cut my little ribbon card. I did find a little scrap of the mat board. You can cut it with some scissors. I would recommend that you use paper scissors, not your good stuff. Um, so definitely use old scissors. And if I were doing that, I would trace on the back of the mat board because all mat boards white on the back. You could just trace out in pencil the three by five size and cut on the line. Or you can get your trusty rotary cutter and ruler and use that to cut the mat board on your cutting mat. Now if you do that, again, use the rotary cutter or an old, uh, an old blade on your rotary cutter. Do not use the good blade that you cut your fabric with to cut the mat board. Um, I have a blade that I use on window screen for making totes and such, and I keep that blade, and I've written on it with marker that that's my screen uh, blade. So I know that that's the, I can cut anything with a blade. <laughs> that's my bad blade is what I'm trying to say. I, I can't cut fabric with it. it. It's so dull it wouldn't. You could also use an X-Acto blade if you wanted to do that to cut your mat board. Any of those methods would work. And if your husband, like mine, has a mat cutter, you can even use that. Although I did not use his mat cutter because I didn't want to learn how to use it. I just used my old rotary cutter and cut my uh, three by five cards that way. So you've got your uh, little ribbon cards cut to size. When I started out, I was even writing the size of the ribbon on here. I have since stopped doing that because when I run out of ribbon, I just grab a card and I put the, a new ribbon on there and it might not be the same size, but I did write it in pencil so I could erase it if I wanted to. Um, so when I get home with ribbon, and, and as you can see from the stack of ribbon, I'm a little behind on that. I'll be doing some ribbon wrapping today. Um, you just take it and I put my thumb on an end and then I just start winding around my little uh, card. And when I get to the end, I don't like to use straight pens. That would work, but um, <laughs> I'm dangerous with straight pens. I have a tendency to poke myself with a straight pen. So what I do is I get out a rubber band. Now you could use any rubber band, um, doesn't matter, it's just whatever you have available. But I went to Walmart and I picked up a package of these little tiny rubber bands that girls use in their hair. So you can get it in the, you know, the um, hair, de hair decorating department, whatever they call that. And I just put them in this little container and take the rubber band and I wrap that around my ribbon so it doesn't doesn't come loose at all and I won't get poked when I'm digging through looking for the color or the size of ribbon that I want. And then I can just slide it into place. That's all there is to it. It's really, really simple. Now, any of you that know me know that I like to reuse little containers. If I come across something that looks like it could be reused, I don't like to waste. And a few years back, I did a video on how to organize your fabric and fold it using a ruler method and bobby pins. And that video is on my YouTube page. So you could go to YouTube and do a search for So Inspired by Bonnie. Or it's on my Facebook page. So you could come to my Facebook page and under the videos you can find that uh, fabric folding video there as well. But this container, I went to Sally's beauty supply and I get my bobby pins by bulk. I get the large ones and they come in this nifty little container and of course I had to save the container and use it for some notion. I wasn't sure at the time what I was going to save it and use it for but I saved it and now I store my little rubber bands in here. 
I love the clear containers because you can see exactly what you're storing inside them, um, which is really, really nice. Um, when you're done with the ribbon box or ribbon drawer, as I have here, is it's a drawer, not a box. Um, then what I do is I love to label the drawers around my room so that I can see at a glance what I have where. Uh, especially when I just reorganized my room, uh, <laughs> when I reorganize or change things, it really helps to have things labeled so that I can find things again because invariably when I put it in a safe spot, I can't find it again. I, I wonder if you're like me on, on that score. Um, but what I get, again, I got these at Hobby Lobby, but any craft store is uh, probably going to carry these. These are vinyl labels. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, and you can reuse them. I really like them because they just, because of that, you can reuse them, and they'll stick to any, uh, these uh, clear drawers really nicely. I just stuck this to the side so that you can see. I know it's crooked, but it just sticks really nice. And what I write on them with, I don't use chalk because that's really messy and would come off real easily. I use what's called a bistro chalk marker. So it writes like a marker, but it, it will uh, write on chalkboard paint or on these uh, little vinyl labels that you can pick up. Um, and I got the Bistro Chalk Marker, that's spelled B as in boy, I-S-T-R-O. I got that again at Hobby Lobby, but I'm sure it's carried at many craft stores. I see them a lot of times at the checkout counter, um, so you might spot them there. They come in all sorts of colors, I just happen to get white. So it's really nice to have everything labeled. Now I know this is going to be backwards because when we do Facebook Live videos, everything's backwards. But you can see on the front, I have my label. And if you could read backwards, it says ribbon on it. Um, so that covers it. That's how I store uh, my ribbon. I can see everything at a glance. I've reduced down by two-thirds the storage space that I used to need just to store my ribbon. Oh, one last thing that I didn't want to forget. You may have noticed that I have a big section here that's just waiting for me to go shopping to fill up with more ribbon. Um, although I do need to roll up what I have and, and put it in here. But if you have some space that you have not used, um, that you plan on having some future ribbon in or um, you just want it to hold up. I just got some uh, bubble wrap and I, you know, lifted up my little uh, ribbon cards and I stuck in a little piece of bubble wrap to work as a spacer. Um, you could take uh, the roll off of a paper roll towel and cut it down to size and slip that in. This happens to be a little tube roll that I found around the house. Now I'm not going to put both the bubble wrap and that in, but one or the other would work really well. So just, you know, use a spacer. If you have all the ribbon you're going to have and you have this extra space, that'd be a great pay place, excuse me, for scissors or other notions that you might have uh, that you'd want to store in that drawer. So... I hope you've enjoyed the uh, Tuesday's tip, and I will pu uh, post this so that if you weren't able to be with me live, then you'll be able to check in and view it later. Um, and until next Tuesday, bye-bye for now. Have a great week.